Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Select Board of the Town of Sunderland. Uh, today is February 6th, 2023. Please call to order at uh, 634. First up on the agenda is the minutes of January 30th, 2023. I motion we accept the minutes of January 30th, 2023. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes of January 30th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, 3-0. All right, we're going to, was this finance committee come tonight? Uh, they were invited. They are aware of the meeting. Okay. All righty. So, um... We will start the uh, budgetary portion of our meeting. First up is the budget presentation by the assessors. I see all three assessors are here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. We are especially happy to see you all tonight. Okay. Thank you, select board members. Hi, Jim. Hi. Um, Jim, you remember here in fourth grade with Mrs. Brooks? I remember Mrs. Brooks. Yeah, Jim, Jim, you know Jim Kowalik when he was here in fourth grade, he used to take clay dinosaurs and throw them out the window at people. I bet you Mrs. Kowalski. No, you're know saying it. that in front of his mom. I said, I bet you she doesn't know that about Jimmy. <laughs> oh, maybe that was us and we would blame Jimmy and the teacher wouldn't believe us. That's probably true. Yeah, the good old days. The old are the good old days. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, what do you got? Okay. Board of Assessors, <laughs> stipend. They pay the three of us um, $8,983, no change from fiscal 23. Dave, our assessor's administrative assistant, we're asking for $19,439. That's no change from 23. General expenses, $1,800. Um, that's level funded again. That's for supplies. Professional development, Dave, he wants to go to the assessor's school this year at Good. Mass. First full week in August. He hasn't been in a couple, three years because of COVID. And there's things that he'd like to catch up on. Is, where's that gonna be, Jimmy? That's at UMass. Um, Okay. It was the first full week of August. Uh, computer support, 8,600. That's an increase of 600, 7.5%. Uh, $600 increase is due to the, GI, the cost of GIX. Tax map updates, 2,100. Level funded again at 2,100. Uh, the tax maps are real important to what what we do, and we'd like to continue with that. Okay. And also evaluation vendor, we six thousand dollars that we pay um, uh, Roy Bishop for such thing as personal property um, revals, um, new construction. New construction. We've got. I believe we've got some new construction going on in the town. Uh, level of under from last year. Uh, that's our budget request, 2024. So, so does the assessor see anything happening in the next? Is there anything coming from the states over the next couple of years that we should be concerned about, or that's going to you see an increase in operation? might have more um, state land. The state wants to buy more land on Toby area, I've heard. Um, especially up high, Middle Mountain Road, Dry Brook. I was talking to a person who owns quite a bit of land up there and they've contacted, the state has contacted uh -huh. his family. Yeah, because they, they've been pr pretty quiet up there for the last couple of years, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the water district bought one one piece up on um, 
was that Middle Mountain Road from from uh, Sampson? Yeah. That that was a couple years ago, right? Yeah, that was off of Nebo. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think the state is, what well, I heard, um, they're active in buying buying more land, conservation. Okay. Purposes. All right. Just to repeat. Um, I spoke to this man Friday. He's a big, uh, he has well over two, three hundred acres up there. He was approached by the state. So I think it's pretty legit. 1,600 acres, huh? No, two or three hundred. Oh. Yeah. I was like, two hundred. Yeah. Two hundred Okay. Nathaniel, Crystal, you have any questions? I do not. If my math holds out, that makes your budget forty six nine twenty two, and that six hundred dollar increase is a one point two seven percent increase. So that's under our two point five. So thank you for that. So no questions. Okay. Can I, can Jeffrey, I ask a clarifying question: um, If the personnel committee recommends a cola or a raise, would you support? that for the admin assistant or is this the, the salary you're recommending or have you not talked about that this is just had a little conversation with him earlier and this is what he was uh, seemed to be okay with this at okay. this time okay I just wanted to thank you okay anything else you guys want to share nice to have warm weather Okay. The new uh, senior senior centers or senior citizen housing that's that's coming along. Yeah. Yeah. I I it's nice to see cars over there. Yeah. That's good. All right. Thank you, assessors. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Nice seeing you again, Marianne. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy thank Valentine's you, Day. Thank you. You too. Oh, that's coming up. Uh, Board of Health, Bruce, are you going to talk for the Board of Health tonight? I guess so, Tom. I'm All the right. only one that's around here. All right, buddy. What you got? Uh, basically, our budget is level funded, Tom, same as last year. Uh, the only thing we're asking to increase is, is, I believe it's $500 for a stipend for our inspectors for uh, travel expense with their vehicles. They use their own vehicles. And, uh, you know, with the price of gas and everything else, I think it's only fair to give them a little stipend so are, are you going to use it as a stipend all right from the start or are you going to pay it out over time it'll, it'll be a it'll be a flat fee for the whole year 250 dollars because then you know you don't have to keep records of your mileage and that kind of stuff yeah um, this is this is besides their hourly rate that they get for inspection Yeah, that that makes sense to me. Crystal, Nathaniel, I'm fine with. Nathaniel, what do you think? Entertaining that. Sixteen five is the total. Is that what we were looking at? No. That's the, oh, that's revolving. Okay. Uh, Seventeen nine. Seventeen nine fifty four is the total. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm good. Sorry, I just had to quite a bunch of numbers quickly. Okay. Bruce, anything else? Nah, uh, that's about it. Um, the only thing is, is we are we're in a collaborative with uh, three or four other towns. Yep. And it's a grant funded program that will eventually provide uh we're hoping for like a public health nurse in town and in in um a backup for our inspectors when they're out and, and things like that okay i was going to ask you about the public nurse it seems to be working out really well in uh, deerfield but they uh um and a lot of a lot of our residents are are taking advantage of that the seniors at least over at the uh, senior center right now so I was wondering what right, you guys it's, it's, it's something that we feel is needed, and with the senior, with the uh, elderly housing opening up and everything, 
I think it's it's something that we can use in town, and it's it's you know it's grant funded, so um, it, it should be very helpful to the seniors and, and anybody else that needs it. Hey, it, it's it's funny, Bruce. People are people are not going to the doctor because of the inconvenience or whatever right now. Sometimes it's getting hard to have. It's getting hard to find a, a an, an available appointment now. Also, so okay. A lot of times they have to go to Springfield for stuff and everything else. That's that's quite a drive. That's a long drive, Bruce. So uh, yeah, I I think it'd be it'd be nice to start talking about that. Let people know what you're thinking. Okay. Great. Right. You know, right. a town meeting. Oh, wait. We're, we're, we're still in a. Yep. This grant is a long, drawn out process, and it's not happening right away, but we will let you know when things are starting to happen. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. And, and also, the other thing we're discussing is the opioid, opioid funding that we're getting. Yep. But uh, I'll, I'll let the selectmen take the lead on that and try to figure that out what's going to happen with that money. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one also. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Is that it, Bruce? That's it. Thank you, Bruce. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Holy moly, look at this town clerk budget. Yeah, everything is the same as last year. Let me turn it the right way. Okay. Oh, it looks better now. I, I was, uh, it was at nine. I turned it nine degrees. It looks better now. Yeah, no, it's the same as last year. I, I do want to add, though, that with the new Votes Act and the public um, records requests, it's a lot. It's a lot for one person. It is not volunteers don't help. Um, you know, uh, so getting help that is dependent and, and not just showing up every once in a while um, is it is important and there's so much more to an election you know with the vote by mail it, you are touching stuff all the time it's like and then voting in the office and then election day um it's just a lot and there's just no room for human error at all because of all of the publicity about elections but you know, the primaries are a mess because a lot of times you have enrolled people, don't put down the ballot, so you're copying your application, sending it back so that they choose what ballot they want. Um, if they don't sign the envelope, you're rejecting it and you're sending them another one. How do you, che how do you check the, do you check the uh, signatures? Every single one of them on the application to the envelope. I just hope you don't check mine. I do. But my signature changes. You know that. Well, it hasn't changed that. I would, I would know it. But, um, you know, and even with going to the registry before, if you went to the registry, you opted in to register to vote. Now you're automatically registered unless you opt out. So everybody that's registered to vote in Sutherland, if they don't opt out, then they're getting, you know, the transaction has to be dealt with. So, I mean, it's just stuff going on all year long. And um, I, there's just gonna come a time where a more dependent staff member will be needed. Nice so. so, are you saying you need more help? Well, I, I, or what are you saying? I think that the town offices is at a point where it's growing and everything needs to grow, so I think the personnel, um, maybe mine's just not at the top of the list right now. Um, so, so Crystal, are you, guys, are you guys looking at that personnel committee? Yep, so there is a request to the personnel committee for um, Help. a, a part-time okay. general resource administrator there you yeah go. so i had that in my budget and i i just took it out um seems it wouldn't be you know it would go through it would be supervised by i would think the town administrator and i was looking to share i don't need somebody all the time so and i wasn't quite sure how Everything. I've never talked to the personnel committee about the town clerk stuff, so, um, it, you know, it's just, I think, um, too late now for my 
Okay. You know, because I want to be able, if I go on vacation, that person can do the job, not have to wait. Although having somebody there is better than nothing. Okay. Chris, do you have any questions? Nope. Nathaniel? Um, just one. Uh, page two looks like it's got a total town clerk expenses of fifty eight ninety. I'm not seeing that in the the spreadsheet at the top. I just see twenty three hundred there. Um, when you when my stuff goes in, I think in that budget in that line item budget on the town clerk does it say a bunch of different things besides like town clerk expense there's a 2300 for town clerk expense there's a thousand for town clerk section 19k or yeah um and then there's the the salary yep. line yeah and then there's this code update and maintenance of 2700 oh, yeah. so i do kind of break it out in the town clerk justification but it really should uh, that stuff should just be put into the expense okay that the town when we presented the budget line by line that's how it was but then when the budget format changed to town government and all the expenses one of the expenses that that mm -hmm. really that's when that changed Okay. So the twenty three hundred should encompass all. I'm trying to think of what else is in there besides update and maybe archival. I'm not sure. Vital supplies, leaves for certificates, dues, Western Mass, dog license to purchase of dog licenses, and cartridges. Okay. Of what I use that money for. Yeah. I think what Nathaniel's talking about is that bigger spreadsheet for every department. I was mostly just, I, I'm seeing two numbers for expense. In, in the spreadsheet, I got the 2300, and then the bottom, bottom of your justification has 5890. That was just. Uh, I. The 5890 is what it should be, yeah. and I wonder if I screwed that up. I mean, that's... It should be 5890. So that's, that's a big change from last year. I don't think so. Okay. I think, I'm wondering if I put in one of the other budgets that I do. Okay. That number. But it's the same. I mean, it should be the same. Can you tell on your thing, Jeff? Um, I can look up the last year's budget. I'd have to go downstairs, but I know that it's Five thousand eight hundred and ninety. Okay. And I know it, it gets divvied up in that three lined one. Not everything, but the whole total should be five hundred and ninety. And it's not what I gave you. I gave you thousand three hundred. So we broke it out. Okay, so it was expense yeah. and then archival, so and so that that's where. Got it. So, so yeah, I will break it out like that again for fifty. And then, and that's the sixty thousand eight hundred and eighteen is going to be level funded. Is that what you're saying? 
well, or plus I and minus the, the COLA? Whatever the personnel committee does, I, I know I'm not at the top of my classification way, whatever that is, but oh. I, I usually do what everybody else does for. So expenses will be level, and then that 53, 9, 28 will go up by whatever the COLA is for this year? Right. Okay. Great. That makes that makes sense. Then. So yeah, I just I just do what everybody else does. Yep. That makes oh, sense. I thought town clerk salary increased twenty five percent. It can, and that's maybe what it is. In the there we go. There we go. Yeah, Let's do what it is. You deserve it, huh? Yeah. Some days more than others. <laughs> and then the elections are the same also. Okay. And I I will say for. Verification. The wage one is the same. It's one less state election, but I am looking to having somebody a little more permanent in the office okay. for the primary, which will go on to that budget, the presidential. Okay. If I could just add one thing, which was when. Wendy was out earlier this year. She had somebody sitting at her desk who was really great. And I found it very helpful that when people were coming for the clerk, they had somebody to talk to that wasn't, mm -hmm. and it didn't interrupt any of the other offices. Um, granted, Molly was awesome, and I don't know that we'd be able to find somebody like her. But um, I just wanted to share that. Okay. You know, it, it is hard. Um, you know, I will say Heather was out ill. Um, and I spent a lot of my day taking care of taxes coming in. So, you know, it is the one person office is some, it's sometimes it's just hard. Yeah. You know, it's not whining or anything. It's just that's the way it is. Right. And everyone's entitled to use vacation time and people get yep. sick and. You know, everything moves on, but it, you know, that's where you kind of feel like maybe having somebody in here that can knows how to process a tax bill that is late and knows how to get on the computer and pull up a birth certificate. Um, you know, knows how to process a dog license. You know, some of the stuff, because I'm thinking, I know the laws have increased in my office a lot, um, you know, over the last five years, if not more, and I'm sure they are in her office too. And Sunderland's so transient. So I have orders always going in and out. Um, I, she has cars, excise tax, you know, always going in and out, you know, so it's a lot more than um, most small towns deal with. Okay. More than you probably wanted to know, huh? Anything else? No. Okay. <clears throat> you guys are good? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Oh, by the way, thanks for doing a good job to keep us out of the newspapers. Thank you. I mean, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, you're welcome. Well, and I understand. I, I, you, you were talking earlier about elections. And I, I think part of if people knew how much care that you, in particular, and other town clerks take in the elections, they may would have more trust in how the elections are run. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, collector treasurer. You guys can ask me, ask me any questions, but um, my budget is only increased a little bit. Uh, one line item is the point software. We're going to a different software. Um, point is no longer going to be offering. They got push it. Go ahead, Jeff. What? No, I was just going to say um, this is the uh, one four six fifty four hundred account. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Do you want me to pull it up on the screen? 
Or are you guys good? It's the collector treasurer tab of the Excel, right? That's what we're looking at. Uh, Account number 001-146-5400. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what the time is. Second. So that's a little bit of an increase. Because uh, we have to change we have to change software. Um, the other all the other thing is postage. That went up. Um, other than that, I tried to keep things pretty level. Under. Which is always the health insurance that fluctuates. And this health insurance estimates a what percent increase? I did put in eight percent. An eight percent increase and two additional family HMO yep. plans, right? Yep. I think we may fall under the eight percent, but I don't know yet. I don't think we know yet for sure. But yeah, there's two family plans in that. So you're looking at next year $515,000. Same plan? Yep, that's just with a uh, with 8% increase. Yeah, same plan. Same percentage split. Okay. So you got eleven percent increase? Mm-hmm. Yep. Hmm. I mean we don't we don't know what the actual increase is. No? No. Okay. We know that it, the average amongst all my members was, I think, 5.6%. Um, but we haven't gotten our specific increase. Okay, Medicare is going to stay the same? So far, yeah. Connor retirement up 9.6%? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That tab looks good, though. I haven't got that far yet. Sorry. Uh, unemployment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now that numbers you projected to hold. Con con constant from this year to next year? For, for what? Unemployment? Yep. Um, yeah, that's a little. Yeah, I know. It's all based on yeah. the state numbers. So the state tell us, but that's what you're projecting right now? Right now. Okay. Okay, and we look on the debt schedule. Yep, we have just the fire truck now. And... Hmm. We paid off quite a few of them. How many more years you get left on the uh, 120 North Main Street? Oh, fine. Okay, get out of here. Um, yep. It's good, huh? Two? Yep. It's going to be almost done, right? Yep. We got two more years. Okay. You'll see that there's quite an interest. There's quite. An increase in the interest on the fire truck, but that was because interest rates were driven up, like most things. 
So then we only have one more year paying on the fire truck after this year, next fiscal year. Yep. Uh, I think it's it's the next fiscal year and a half because it looks like the last payment is twenty December twenty five. Yeah. Twenty five. Yeah. So eight. So that's wow. fiscal year twenty half of fiscal year twenty five. Mm. And then, yeah, so they pretty much end almost the same time, 120 Main Street and the... Yep. So there is no debt. Two months apart. Right, and at that point, the the um, dump truck will be paid, the lease, or... Yeah. Lease to own, so yeah, no debt. We're going to keep it that way, right? <laughs> no. We're going to keep it that way, right? So about that. <laughs> well, those are good... Those are conversations you got to have. Yeah. I don't know necessarily if that's a good thing. Yeah. Right. But it's not a bad thing. No. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a toss up actually. Okay. All right. Uh, Nathaniel, questions? No. Oh. Crystal. Um. We got all our paperwork submitted for the state. Just about. Yep. So we'll know free cash shortly. You should. You know more than me, Jeff. You should. Yep. They got CPA settled today, so they, that's what they said was the last thing, and just rerunning the reports. Yep. Wonderful. Okay. So so. Good. Any no other questions for Heather? No. I, I guess so. You're working with the insurance group, getting the information that they need. Yeah. Right. You talking about the advisory insurance advisory committee? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. When are they coming? Tomorrow. Oh, oh, they're meeting tomorrow. They wanted to come in um, early to mid March to present. The recommendations, I think. All right. I think it's February. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Heather. Appreciate Next it. up, thank you very much. Request from Frontier to reallocate a hundred thousand dollars from E and D. Yes. You, um, is, Greg, is that why you want to talk? Greg just left. I think he he left. Um, Sorry to to sound like the idiot in the room, but anyone mind explaining what access and deficiency is? Just it, it it's money. the school equivalent of free cash. Basically, it's the okay. money they didn't spend in last year's budget sort of rolls over into. And if I'm remembering something from a couple of weeks ago, there's a cap on that, right? There's a certain percentage of the five percent. Five percent. Okay. Great. Thank you. So the so anything over five percent, say by law, they need to master law chapter seventy one comes. They have to redistribute. To the towns. Okay. In in the immediate past, we have received some money back, small amounts, right? One year was like twenty five hundred dollars, twenty eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got some money back last year too. I don't know if it was oh, yeah. related to E and D, but so this request from them is to spend some of their free cash, basically. At, actually, it's just to spend it differently. Spend it differently. Okay. Okay, so it's money that we that they had budgeted for one thing, and they're asking to budget yeah. for something else. Okay, that makes there. That's the that was a key I was looking for. Thanks. Well, E and D. Okay, if we could take a second, it's it's very important. Okay. So, at times, different administrations felt that they could spend E and D however they wanted to. But I do not believe that that's how it's written. And I don't believe the state thinks that's how it's written either. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they produce a budget, they have to, just like if we want to use free cash, at we just can't middle of the year willy-nilly say, we want to spend a hundred thousand dollars of free cash to put up a 
whatever. Mm-hmm. The you have to go back to the appro- you have to go back to the appropriating p- body, which for us is town meeting. So you we you have to ask town meeting. If it's okay to spend from free cash. Mm-hmm. So if part of this frontier's budget, they say they're going to use E and D thirty thousand dollars of E and D to do this, fifty thousand dollars to do that, whatever. For a total two hundred thousand dollars, they can spend two hundred thousand dollars out of the E and D. They can't spend two hundred thousand and one dollar. That one dollar has to come back, and you have to ask the towns if it's okay to spend that money. This present administration is has done a very good job at that, and at that point, the towns have two choices. They can either go back to this board of selectmen can go back to a town meeting, special town meeting, and ask the special town meeting or the board of, the board can allow it to occur. Okay. But so, the schools have to ask. So this is the request from them to spend some of their E and D funds on something and I'm not sure yet. What 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 are they asking to do? Um my understanding is that they are just asking to spend, reallocate $100,000 of E&D funds. Do they have a letter? They, yes. Yeah, we have a letter, but it doesn't, it just says larger maintenance and you know, like boiler. It just says larger forms. maintenance and equipment replacement, including renovation and replacement of the tennis courts. And replacement of the boiler system. So I guess there there are a couple of things. I, I read this as there had been E and D funds appropriated. They wanted to spend it differently. But reading the letter now, it could be read. I, I'm not I'm not convinced anymore. It could be they're asking to spend a hundred thousand dollars that hadn't been in the budget. Um, that's point one. Point two. Uh, Waitley, Conway, and Deerfield have already approved it, so this is kind of a, um, it doesn't matter if you approve <laughs> it, because it's going to happen, I believe. Well, it, it does. It, it, in, in the fact that Deerfield, Conway, Whiteley may not be aware of the law. Okay? Yep. So my, my, quite my, my, so I don't have so if they're just asking, we've are just saying that we already had, but we're just want to spend it some other way. That's one thing now, or if they want to do a hundred thousand dollars more than what they had in the original budget, that's something that we should know and we should be able to say, okay, you're going to do this with it. They're going to have, and they're going to stay within the, the 5%. That's a different conversation. I'm, I'm not saying that they come up with a different answer, but we should know what we yeah. we should know what we're voting on. Yeah. Well, especially because the the tennis court was something that my original question was that we were even coming with a capital <coughs> for from the from the school, and it sounds like they're asking just to spend this on it. So 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 let's say, for instance, and and, and again, I'm just I I don't know. But so so in the budget they were going to use this hundred thousand dollars. They had already asked to use this hundred thousand dollars to paint in gymnasium chartreuse, okay. right? Now they decided that they're not going to paint the gymnasium chartreuse. They're going to use a hundred thousand dollars to fix the tennis courts. Mm-hmm. Now if it was already in the budget, they don't have to ask us. Okay. Okay. They they can they can tell us that's what they're they're going to do, but but that money was already appropriated hundred that hundred total budget was already appropriated. They can do that. Now if they if they want to spend another hundred thousand dollars that wasn't part of the budget, they want to do an additional hundred thousand dollars, and I don't know if that's what they're asking. Then they would have to ask us and the other the towns if it's okay if we could spend another hundred thousand dollars. So we don't know that answer, right? No. And in terms of 
what that would mean for our bottom line. This is money that they already have, but is in their free cash, their EAD fund. If they don't spend that hundred thousand, or let's say it's, it's a hundred thousand they didn't already have allocated, if they don't spend that, does that mean that they their budget request to us this year is a hundred thousand dollars or thirty percent of a hundred thousand dollars later, or does that mean that they're just going to have a tighter year next year in terms of their EMD budget? Maybe. Okay. I guess they, so. So it, it have to. They would have to go through the process. They would have to go through the process of of closing out their books and see how much E&D money that they have. Mm -hmm. So if they have extra, if they have extra over the five percent, they'd have to give it back to us. Okay. The three town. So we would get thirty percent, Bob. Right. So you get thirty thousand bucks. Okay. If if they were hundred thousand dollars over, but I'm not. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll find out. No, does that make that makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay. So if, if they're if either way they're within the five percent, then it doesn't really matter to us. But if if this would be if not spending this money would put them over the five percent, we could see money coming back to the town. Is what could. Okay. It, 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 and I don't know. And it, it all depends on how the books close out. It could. They, I I don't. You know. They could. Now, if it is underneath the 5% either way, and thus either way we're not getting money back, it still means they're going into next year with $100,000 less in the E&D fund. And so either that means they're asking for more money in the budget or they're just going to end next year with less money. My, my, guess, my guess, and, and I, I, I don't know, but my guess is that they, 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 they've been – Pretty careful on how they've been spending the budget, and they probably found themselves with a. They've been able to to put aside another hundred thousand dollars, or not spend a hundred thousand dollars. So they would just end up when they went. They would have a hundred thousand in excess of that five percent. They would come back to the towns. Okay. So my that's my guess. I don't. Yeah. Well, and, and the other side of things is both of the things they're asking for are things that if they don't pay for it out of this, they're going to be asking the towns to pay for in some other way. Um, they, uh, I think they're going to be asking the towns to pay for in addition to this. This, is, to this, this, is, this is the tennis courts. I think is hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, it is okay. So this, this is the not, boiler is to the boiler system. So is this is just we want to start paying for these with this, and then we're going to still be asking for money. But but either way, if they ask for four hundred thousand later. And they ask that this hundred thousand, or they're asking for five hundred later. Either way, it's 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 not like that what they're asking for is something that we're not going to be seeing if we say no to this. Correct. It's just where the money comes from, and if that's the case, then I have less problem with just saying, sure, go ahead and spend that money. And and and, and like I said, I I think this is this is really good management from the from the from the school administrators. Yeah. To, to, to say to the towns this is what we're doing it it always hasn't been this way yeah that I guess that's what I'm trying to say yeah so the fact that and, they're even and, coming to and, us and, is, is and I, I'm I'm complimenting this the administration that I believe that this is the right way in my opinion I and this is what people had told me I believe this is the right way to do it and 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 if that's and if that's what they're doing I, I support this. Um, but I think it's the right way to. This is the this is the kind of actions that builds communication between the the town side and the school side. Yeah. Doing so, when you see something like this, to me, it's it, it it helps with me building that that level of communication that's so important between school and the town. That because sense, because yeah. that's all we can and, and we've said it before we don't have a lot to say about their budget right well, especially frontiers budget comes to us and like just said well the other three towns already okayed it so there's nothing we can do there's nothing we can do except that we're saying we can say thank you for opening it up communicating with all of us which is very important yep that's I guess what I'm that I was trying to say. That makes total sense. So you just we we can do this next week. I mean yeah. they weren't going to spend a hundred thousand dollars today, right? No. Okay. Well, that we know of. Good. Do we, do we want to have Jeff at, clarify? Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so the next week we'll have that clarification and we'll be able to move forward. Okay, great, perfect. Yeah, we'll do that next week real quick. Beautiful, thank you. All right, old business, retirement COLA. Retirement COLA. So um, the state has authorized retirement boards to um, add an additional up, additional 2% to the um, typical 3% COLA. Um, this would be beginning in 2024 or 2027. It's only on the first 17,000 though, right? Yes, on the first 17,000. It's on the first 17,000. Only on the first 17,000. Okay, so, so it's not on... Yeah. Right, yeah. so that would increase the average retiree's benefit by $259. So the total COLA that the average uh, retiree would see would be $647. So, a year? Yes. Okay, yeah. so we're talking so of, of fairly small Annual retirement, yeah. money. Okay. Yep. If we shake the cola, can we make it flat? No? Probably. Open it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bad dad jokes aside. Um, I mean, I, I, of course, want to be conservative with budget things, but at the same time, retirees trying to live on a fixed income, this is a hard year to not give them uh, an increased cola. And it's a fairly small amount that we're talking about per person. Yeah, and just so the FERCOG voted, FERCOG Council voted to support this also for, for their retirees. And just to clarify, it would not be effective until fiscal year 26. So 26, okay. Yeah. Yep, yeah, 26. Yeah, and then, you know, you mentioned small dollars. I mean, for Sunderland, it would be about between 2026 20, and 2034, it wouldn't be more than $15,000 a year. Okay. Yeah, between and we have a couple 12. of years before going to effect anyways, and so we're not trying to bu budget this year. We're, we have time to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll make a uh, entertain a motion. Hi, motion. We increase the cola per the by an additional two percent. By the additional two percent. Was it two or three? Two. two. The additional two percent outlined in this document starting in twenty twenty fiscal year twenty twenty six. Is that what it? Yeah. Yep. Seconded. Okay, so what basically you'll be sending, so the retirement board and two thirds of the boards in Franklin County need to agree to this. So we have a motion made and seconded that approve the additional 2% to the COLA of retirees, and it's only on the first $13,000 of the annual retirement benefit. All those in favor, signify by 17, saying. Huh? The first 17,000. 17,000, yeah. yeah. You said 13. That's why I was correcting I did? Yeah, that's why I was correcting you. That's all right. Okay, that's fine. 17,000. Yes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Jeff Tree Zero. Thank you. All right, next up is the Infrastructure Gift Fund Guidelines. Yes. Hey, we haven't talked about this in years we have it um since last year essentially the guidelines are uh copied and pasted from the riverside park and just amended you know it certainly didn't make sense to talk about maintenance of fields or anything like that for infrastructure fund um so that sentence was changed by the can be used for uh, road work, not covered by chapter 90, signs, culvert repairs, sewer repairs, not an exclusive list. Um, the uh, donations can be made through myself or the highway superintendent, and it, um, the select board would decide how the money gets spent uh, in consultation with myself and the highway super. Okay. Any questions? Changes? Uh, I read it over. It looks great to me. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm good with it. Motion then. <coughs> I motion we accept the infrastructure gift fund policy. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to accept as presented the uh, Sunderland infrastructure gift fund policy and add it to our policy and procedure manual. Without hearing any other conversation, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Tree zero, Jeff. Mass in motion workshop guidelines. Attendees. Attendees. So we attendees. Um, right the when the mass in motion when Rachel and oh, Carol were here, um, they mentioned there was going to be a workshop later in February, and they wanted uh, two people from Sunderland to come. Um, I believe it was last week we talked about the regionalization effort and how the senior center is going to run that. They still would like two people from Sunderland to participate in this workshop. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to recommend uh, Joe Elias from the finance committee had volunteered and, and said he was interested. Um, and then if you have recommendations, please let me know. But otherwise, um, I'd like Cindy Bennett to go because I think it would be helpful to have a staff member who hears what's happening um, and, and has an idea of what's what they're talking about for the mass and motion program. But if you have other suggestions, please let me know. Cindy would be great, I think, for the good idea. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah, okay. that works for me. It's not. It's a working group, so you don't even have to make an appointment. I just wanted to run nope. the names by you in case you had any. Okay. Our request. Uh, Yes, um, we actually have two ARPA requests. Uh, one is for $3,000 to seal the floors and do some painting on the police department side of the public safety complex. This was originally a capital request um, and the capital committee thought that it would be a good ARPA um, project. The uh, police chief thinks it's going to be about $3,000 for materials and to get them to come in. I'm trying to think, did, did the chief talk about this when he was here? He talked about he the did. two days. He did two right? days. Yeah. Saw that. So, um, yeah, this would cover the ceiling and, and then um, the supplies for painting. So, why aren't we doing the whole thing? Um,. I, the fire chief has not requested that it is maybe not a priority of his for for um, the fire side of the building. Um, can can you talk to the chief because I I, I know the um, it definitely needs paint. The walls need paint. Yep. And and the last time I was in there, I thought the the floors could use a good stripping and, and waxing. I don't know a lot. I, and maybe something's changed since I've seen it last. I, I haven't been in there for a little bit, but... It hasn't been done since, I can tell you that. So. It, it should be. And, and the walls definitely should be painted. Okay. okay? Yeah, no, I, I agree, especially if we're going to be doing one and a half, it would make sense to do the whole thing and I get a better bid and all that kind of stuff. So, and, and it should be done soon. Yep. That was par partially why the capital committee suggested we came up, decided to suggest this as an ARPA request is because good, then it good gets, idea. gets done and we don't have to wait a long time. And the police chief has been asking for this to be done for years, but because the public safety building maintenance falls under the fire department, it ends up being something that he doesn't have. Get have you done, problem. have we used to, the capital committee used to take visits on different buildings. Have you gone, have you visited the different buildings? Not yet, no. I, do you know if that's planned? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but we could bring it up at our next capital meeting. Maybe because we we used to do that every once. We used to do that. Yeah. We used to visit the school, this building, and meet meet with like the town administrator here, the principal at Frontier. Or now we could do the facilities yeah. and the in the um, the police um, talk to the police station, fire station, wastewater treatment plant. That was always an interesting trip. Highway garage. Highway garage. Maybe, maybe we sh and we we did it. We d we've done it on Saturday. We've done them during the week. But maybe maybe we should try. Maybe we should try to do that again. Because I I, I definitely think the fire station or the fire 
the fireside needs kit in a, in a kitchen needs to be maintained. Mm -hmm. Okay. My suspicion is that the fire chief would love to have it done, but just hasn't actually asked for it to be done. But if told, hey, you could ask for this, he, I'm sure in a heartbeat, be like, yes, do it. Yeah, see if we can do that. Okay. All right. And it seemed like a good ARPA use. I, good, I, 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 I think it's a good, good, good use of ARPA money. Uh, motion. So are we going to actually make a motion before we uh, talk to the fire department? Yeah. I, oh, I, okay. Get the other side. Get All the other side moving. All right. Or do we want to? They're asking for three. Do we want to say not uh, uh, more than seven thousand or something like that? And then, well, or, or do, do we have to wait for the request for the other half? <coughs> no, let's, let's let's just do what the chief is right. asking for, and then All right. and then we'll do the fire. I mean, fire. I mean, the, I don't have a problem doing that, but yeah. I. I and and if he can't, then we'll get if he if the fire chief won't give you a number, we'll go in and get and look at it and okay. and we'll we'll. I'd love to make a suggestion for color on the walls inside there. Chartreuse. Chartreuse would be nice. There you go. It's a, po motion. It's a power color tie, you know. The chartreuse is a power color tie. You need Vanta black that absorbs all the color. Yeah. I motion we um, appropriate three thousand dollars in ARPA funds for. Floor ceiling and painting in the police department side of the public safety complex. Seconded. So this is for floor care and painting. Yes. You want to? Okay. I said floor ceiling and painting. Yeah. No, no. I was I was wondering about color. If you had a particular oh, color. Oh, a particular color. Yeah. As long as it's not gray, I'm not into that. I think cells are going to be gray. Trendy gray everything color. All right. It's not me. We have motion made, Nathaniel. Seconded. Hey, we got a second. All those in favor of our money for the the uh, request for the police side of the public safety complex, a floor seal and paint the walls? Aye. Aye. Three zero. All right. There was one other ARPA request um, that I mentioned last time, which is the brackets for the Sunderland Elementary School basketball backboards so yeah. that they can be raised and lowered. Um, the request was for $2,000 um, and the school, um, I think, has found 3,200 in donations that they could put towards it. Um, so they're, they're requesting $2,000 so that during February break when they install the new backboards, they can install the brackets and we'll have Oops, so do you want more? Down. You want two thousand dollars? They want two thousand dollars. Absolutely, I've got no problem with that. Then you, do we need a motion? All right, I motion that we appropriate two thousand dollars in ARPA funds for the elementary school to put in height adjustment equipment on the backboards. Seconded. A motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. Select board updates. Nathaniel. I uh, had a capital planning committee meeting, which was very productive. Um, as we mentioned when the, the committee came in to the select board, um, there's a lot of money that we need for a lot of things. But we are um, making good progress and coming up with a plan of how to pay for everything and where it should all come from and whatnot. Um, and we should have a letter from our committee to this board soon um, that outlines what we're asking for and what our plan is and that kind of thing. So, thank you, Nathaniel. Should we come soon? Crystal? I'm all set. Um, select board updates. Um, I, I just like to mention that last week, our, our town building inspector, uh, electrical inspector, Peter Murphy, passed away. Uh, Pete's been our had been our electrical inspector for many years um, and I just wanted to recognize Peter's uh, service to our community in a lot of different ways Pete did a lot of little things that uh, probably would never know about but uh, as Pete took a um, when he became the electrical inspector he started doing a lot he worked. He had some big projects during his time, so I'd like to offer my condolences and the board's condolences to Peter's family. And uh, um, Tech 
town administrator updates? Uh, yep, three quick things. Um, one is the police department received a $1,300 grant, um, which is going to help fund the drug take back collection box that they do annually. Um, the second is uh, there's a meeting tomorrow, e a school committee meeting tomorrow evening um, where they're going to be talking about the budget and the select board was invited in the finance committee as well. Um, and the reason for this special meeting is because they don't anticipate knowing the state aid to schools until early March. So they wanted to have a preliminary discussion so that we understood what they're thinking the budget's going to look like. What time? Six o'clock. Is that here? That is at the school. At the school. And there's a um, there's a, a Google link to a Google Meet link, I think. Okay. Um, and then the last thing, which is no surprise to anybody who's spent time in Sunderland or lives here, we have a great library, um, and it was recognized by a, a national publication, one of 20 libraries in the state that was recognized, I think one of 200 and 50 in the country or something um, and you know like, like I said we we know the library is great and it's nice that, that they get some recognition outside of town as well um, so I just wanted to, to mention that and say congratulations to the library and thank you for for doing such a great job there was a lovely article about it in the Greenfield recorder it was really nice to see the our wonderful little library getting some from press because we know I, it's a gem and it's nice to have other people know that too I, I think more important than that, than I, I, I think um, Catherine and her staff, library trustees, um, during COVID, um, they really stepped up to the plate. And, and I think that, and, and it said that there's a lot of, you know, there are some that weren't even, libraries weren't even entered because of what they didn't do during COVID or that they were shut down. So I, I would think that um, one of the most impressive things was that Catherine and her staff and the trustees prioritized the library resources throughout COVID as an important um, tool to help people during that time. And, and they did everything in their power to make, to make it accessible. Through, through the different various ways they did it. And I, I think that was, that's a reflecting on the staff the, and their leadership through Catherine. And, and, in, and, and to me, the importance was it would have been very easy for them just to sit down and not, not do anything, but they, they addressed it. They, they went forward, knew how important the library was to people, to help, to help people, and that's probably the to me, the the best part of the recognition, and and shows a town how how much they they care. So, good job, guys. All right. So right now, you want to go into executive session? Yes. All right. So at this time, uh, we're we we're going to be going to see if we go into executive session. So the chair's executive session pursuant to the provision of general law. Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Um, federal, this is federal multi district litigation versus CVS, Walgreens, Ta Walmart, Teva, and Allegrin. Um, so we will be adjourning. Or, or going into executive session, we will reconvene to vote in open session to vote out only. We will not conduct any other business. Excellent. So right now we need a roll call vote. Jeff? A motion. motion, yeah. A motion we go to executive session. Seconded. Um, Mr. Waring, a roll call vote. Oh, Mr. Waring, yes. Sorry. Mr. Drake Trombley. Aye. Crystal Drake Trombley. Mr. Feigenkiewicz. Aye. So we will enter into executive session. We will return to 
open session to adjourn only. <laughs>